In this section, we're going to cover the beak and the tail and some smaller details in the legs, and we'll work on the grass at the end. So I'm going into the tail first, and this is basically the same approach that we've been taking up to this point. I'm starting with some white and some of the orange and brown colors, the tan colors um, throughout the tail, as well as some of the blue and white. I'll, I'll blend that in later, I think. But for now, this is still more of the same. So I'll take you through filling in the tail. We'll move on to the beak. We'll actually change brushes. Here we're still using the number two hog bristle filbert to lay in the color. And I'm actually laying it in rather thin um, in terms of the application here. You can actually see my pencil lines through the paint. But I know I keep saying this and it doesn't matter because when we do the second layer of paint, this is all going to get covered up anyway. Here again, just some more orange. Um, and if, I, if I need to lighten it up, I go into the white. If I need to darken it, I'll keep the colors warm. Take the paint off with the uh, paper towel and go back into it. Make sure that I don't have too much. And at this point, the entire tail is blocked in, so I can paint wet into wet and merge these colors together. Now I have to be careful not to lose track of the form. I know that the tail connects to the body and there's some feathers that go in and around it, but at, that po at this point, that's all I need. I don't really need any more detail than that. And now for the beak, I've switched brushes. This is the number two round from Hamburg. And we're just going to be putting the shadow in. This is primarily going to be the dark black color here and some of the lighter blue color that I used on the belly. And as far as blocking goes, uh, that's really all I need to be worried about. It's, it's probably actually not going to be much more detailed than this when it's finished. It'll just be a matter of refining it and making sure that the beak connects to the head properly. All the details are in the right place, things like that. So this process is actually pretty slow because being such a small area, you know, you need to be accurate with it. You definitely need to have some control. So you'll see me here taking a mall stick um, resting my hand on a mall stick so that I can have more control because holding my hand up and trying to lean it on the table wasn't working so well. So with the mall stick propped up against my easel, it's a little bit easier to maintain that control. Now, even though I have been sectioning these videos off, um, this is all still the same painting session. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that the paint is still wet on the bird's head. Uh, I think I mentioned this last video too. I'm just splicing it up to break apart the sections of the bird into different videos so that it's a little bit easier to keep up without having to search through one long video to find just that spot you want. 
Um, so it can be misconstrued slightly in, in regards to uh, how long all of this is taking. But rest assured that this entire thing was filmed in one sitting. I think it took me, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour at most. If you really want to know how long it took, just add up the lengths of all the videos. <laughs> um, you'll be able to figure it out. But it did not take me very long at all. And all, all I did was cut the footage up and split it into sections, you know, the head the wing, the belly, the tail. Now the tail and the beak and the legs and the grass, that's, that's all in this section here because it didn't take all that much time to do those sections, you know, those areas. And uh, I didn't see any sense in splitting that into four more videos. So those are all combined into this one. Now don't worry if you get a little sloppy here, especially if you're not used to using this brush. Uh, you, you can get a little messy on the beak. Just try to block it in to the best of your ability and keep the structure intact, keep the form there. Also keep in mind that when we put the background in, the edges are probably going to get a little messed up anyway. So anticipate that and don't worry too much about it if you're not perfect. You don't have to be perfect at this point. One of the things that's important about the next layer that we're going to paint is that it's actually going to describe what we see. In other words, we're going to be more, we're going to be much more literal about how we translate the photograph almost as if we were taking notes or writing a journal and describing the bird in words that's a pretty good way to think about it actually you know um, taking notes keeping a journal that's how we want to paint it i won't go too much further into the beak detail here because Again, there isn't much to put in. It's just some shapes and the, the subtlety and all of that um, where the transitions are will be put in with the next layer. And as I was saying, the, the next layer is all about describing what we see in terms of surface texture. So it's gonna be a lot of feathers, some of which we'll put in with this brush here and others we'll put in with the number two filbert. The background we'll be doing with the flat because we need to cover a little bit more space. Um, we need to cover more space in a shorter amount of time. A little bit more detail there in the area around the eye, just because 
I'm looking to integrate the beak into the head a little bit more, give myself some idea as to where I need to go with that final layer. And again, this is all about taking visual notes. I'm not worried about putting those final details in yet. I'm just making notes for myself to remind myself later when I get there to that stage of what I want to do. So here I'm mixing up some of the blue into the brown and some red there just to get a darker color. I'm still working in the shadow area, but I'm mixing up a new tone using those colors. And what I'm going to do is take that into the legs because the color changes when you get underneath the bird. You have the actual color of the bird's leg. You have the light being reflected up from underneath that's coming off of the grass. And you also have the white of the bird's belly casting light onto the legs. So you have all of those things going on. And what we're describing here is basically a result of all of those colors mixing together. It's not just a random dark color. There's meaning behind it. There's a purpose to it. I think the best job you can do is to describe the forms in such a way that makes sense when you look at it. You know, you don't look at this and you say, oh, wow, it looks, it looks like he has, you know, twigs for legs. You, you want to look at this and say, oh, he's got legs for legs. You know, you, you really want to be able to see that your painting reads in terms of what you're trying to describe. Since I'm not trying to describe a tree, uh, I definitely don't want his legs to look like tree limbs or twigs. Now, down there where his feet are, I'm not really going to worry too much about that because when I go to paint in the grass, all of that will be taken care of. But right now, with just a few brush strokes and that new color I mixed up combined with some white, I've been able to describe with some degree of accuracy here the, uh, the effect of his legs. And all of this will be tied together when we put the final layer in there. The underside of his belly needs to be a little bit darker and there's some other detail we need to add. But in terms of a block in, this is definitely the most detail you want to do. Okay, so we'll move into the grass. Now what I'm doing is wiping out my brush. This is the number two filbert again. And going into the green that I mixed. Now here it's really just a matter of, I don't wanna say arbitrary shapes, but it's definitely abstract shapes that resemble you know, flowers and leaves and whatever foliage is there underneath the bird. And I'm going to be modifying the color quite a bit here because I have my base green that I mixed. I have another green. I have at least one more green that I mixed that's a little bit lighter. And as I go around this area, I am going to be changing it with different colors. The colors I add to it will be primarily in the same family as the green. You know, they, they might extend up into the yellows and white or down into reds and browns. You won't see any purples or blues in here unless I'm trying to convey a sense of shadow underneath the bird. But for the most part, it's going to be all warm colors centered around this green that I have.
So here now taking some brown. Now where the green is, I'm able to paint wet into wet and blend the colors together. And I don't want to do too much blending because I do want to make sure that the mark making here conveys a sense of foliage. But as I've been saying all along, this isn't the final layer. So I don't have to worry too much about being perfect. I don't, I'm not drawing individual leaves here. Just a sense of where those shapes are. I'm also looking for a sense of light and shadow. So you'll see where I add the dark colors. It makes sense. I don't just add dark colors for the sake of putting dark colors. I don't just add light colors for the sake of putting light colors. Everything has a purpose. The darker colors will go underneath the bird. The lighter colors will go on top of the foliage where the light would be hitting them. Now, something I should mention here is that you can't see the bottom of the canvas. The bottom of the canvas does go out of the frame, but don't worry too much about that because literally all I'm doing is more of the same. Whatever you see me doing on the screen is what I'm doing at the bottom of the canvas. There's nothing different happening down there. You know, and all the interest is up at the top anyway. See here, I've, I've added some lighter color. and I'm just topping off the grass. Notice how none of it goes underneath the bird. Pay very particular attention to that photograph and put your lighter tones in where you see them. Put your darker tones in where you see them. And if you need to darken the green, remember the complementary opposite of green is red. So adding red or any of those browns is going to neutralize the green like I've done here. You see how it creates a sort of a gray and that effect is achieved by combining complementary colors. So what I'm looking for is the opposite of the green that I have there to neutralize it into a gray. So we'll just finish this off and move on to the next video in which we'll put the background in. Now the background is going to be a little bit of a different story because I'm not going to be following the photograph at all. I think the, uh, the background is definitely too busy in the photograph. There's too much going on, it's too distracting, and I'm going to completely change it. Going off script. So when you're doing this painting, you don't even have to do the background. I mean, you can learn how to do this just by watching what I've been doing so far. If you wanna do the background though, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, I'll see you there.